The benefits of running a national whiskey club and being a retailer at the same time is that we get to connect to fellow whiskey drinkers around the shared passion, which is whiskey, obviously, but we also get inside access behind the scenes by being uh, an industry member and offering our members VIP tours and experiences that most bourbon drinkers aren't privy to because they are not a part of a club that has an inside inside track, if you will. Now, one of the things that that inside track allows us to do is to pick and choose projects that are just a little bit outside of the norm. And so we don't just select barrels. Of course, we do select plenty of them, but we always look for that it factor. And I'm about to describe one of those very special projects. So this little guy kicked off this very special project into existence. We selected this barrel uh, about a year ago with Copper and Cask. And by the way, Copper and Cask produces some of the best whiskeys around for the money. If you haven't had a chance to try them, I strongly suggest you do. Anyway, what's what makes this interesting is this little designation, MF768. MF768 is a battle number that we absolutely loved when we were visiting with them. MF is something that I want to point your attention to. So M uh, stands for matured in Indiana. This is what Copper and Cask uses. That's their uh, coding, uh, if you will. But F uh, means that it was aged actually in Florida. And Florida, very hot and humid climate, does wonders to the whiskey. This particular sample was eight years of age when it was poured into this little container. So even on its own, it would have been a strong yes for us. Eight years of age, finished in Florida. Uh, it's unique enough, uh, t more importantly, tasted amazing. So uh, it would have been a strong pick. But we wanted to do something else with it and what we wanted to do we wanted to see if i could benefit from a secondary finishing or perhaps double oaking and with the space being so proliferated with uh finishes whether they warrant it or not we didn't want to go that route so we decided on double oaking especially given that we have access to a fantastic used barrel that used to house this little fella the one and only newer if nine years of age Those and so what we've done we've divvied up that MF768 barrel into two parts. One would be used as is and it continued to age. The other part was put into a secondary oak, used oak, but there's more. So I'm sure many of you have had double oak expressions before. I am uh, seeing it becoming a trend nowadays, much like, you know, finishes used to be. But not a lot of you actually have a chance to try how whiskey ages and the effect of the double oaking as it continues to age in that secondary cask. Well, again, part of being a member of the Prime Barrel, you actually get to experience that. And so we've had an arrangement with the producer where they would actually send the samples periodically just to see how... Uh, the whiskey is progressing in that secondary oak and in the initial oak, right? Because at the time it was eight, in about a month, this, this guy is going to turn nine. So we had those sets of samples sent to us, and we were able to monitor the progression and compare in time units. Of course, the byproduct of periodically tasting that whiskey in those time units, as we call them, which is to say every so often, uh, was to essentially QC how whiskey was progressing in initial and secondary oak and not let it over oak. So this is what it looks like. Again, it all started with this little fella that we loved uh, when we were visiting with Cup Brown Cask about a year ago. And then we split that barrel into two equal parts. One kept aging in the same barrel. And so those two samples are actually from that barrel received at different time periods. And then this side has been aging in the secondary oak that used to house this little guy. Got it? Get it? Good. So let's first talk about how samples from the same barrel compare to one another. Um, the only difference is, again, when they were pulled from the barrel. So as you would expect, uh, the stuff that's been aging longer has a bit of a more wood influence, but it also has more of a sugar presence, right? Double oaking, for the most part, balances the whiskey out. It introduces more sweetness to it, for the most part, but it also could get uh, over-oaked quickly. Now, these two samples weren't uh, double oaked. This is These just continue to age in the original barrel. 
but even the difference between these two uh, is noticeable. It's not stark. It's noticeable. Uh, this one has more of a wood presence. It also has more of a those residual sugar presence uh, in it. And it's, it's very savory, and I'll get back to it. The difference between this one and the original one is quite stark. Both great, but different. <clears throat> but I think the more interesting question is, is how this uh, un-oaked, un-double-oaked expression compares to its double-oaked cousin. And so the biggest difference is, is that, again, as you would expect, the more time in wood that it spends, and in this case, it spent more time in wood and it spent time in two different barrels, right? One new oak and then one used oak. So he definitely picked up more of that spice that double-oaking produces. Um, but it also has notes of cherry, it has notes of espresso, uh, cocoa nibs, right? That uh, little bitter dark chocolate. Again, you would expect that from a double oaked expression. Versus this dude, he has notes of peaches, um, notes of ripe plum, notes of blackcurrant, uh, brown sugar. It's a little bit more savory expression than this is. Which one do I like better? Well, it's like asking me which one of my kids do I like better. I like them both. I like them for different reasons. If I'm in the mood for something more with the bite, I'll I'll reach for the double oak expression. If I just want to savor and and enjoy, you know, the, the more sweeter floral notes, uh, savory notes, I should say, I, I would go to this one. You'll have an opportunity to get both of these uh, when they launch later this year uh, both are ready to be bottled it's just we have a long queue of barrels waiting to be launched prior to this guy dropping but uh, you'll get to experience uh, this project right along with us i'm very happy to be a part of this and now you can be too by a sheer fact of following us on here on instagram and uh, joining our discord so cheers